Disclaimer! The following episode contains spoilers for Mulan 2020. Don't go crying to your mum if we spoil it for you. You've been warned. Welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast for a place to hang your cape. And this week, what do we want? A film worth paying for. That is not this movie, though. Cue the music! Hello there, capers, and as I said, welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. My name's Scott James Meridew, and this is the show where we talk about various geek and nerve related topics, and are joined each week by a very special different guest. Two weeks in a row, it's Mark Russell. You know, I was very tempted to do the dishonor joke, but frankly, I don't think this film deserves it. I mean, not to mention the fact that everyone on the internet and their mum has made that joke, but you're absolutely right, this film does not. Oh, God, this film. Garbage this... fire. Garbage fire. But that's the thing, see, I wouldn't go that far. But I would, but I wouldn't. It's This is Schrodinger's garbage fire, <laughs> where it's both on fire and not on fire well, at the same fine, time. Then. The garbage fire could, could be reinterpreted as Disney's PR nightmare right now. Oh, my God. You see, I was trying to avoid all news of this movie to go into it blind, so I missed out on all the controversies. And we're going to get into that. Do you think that I would skip over that, capers? You fools! You bloody fools! No, we... Oh, there's so much to fucking talk about, but... So this is the latest. The latest in a long, 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 long line of live-action Disney remakes, and um, I mean, I'd say, have you come around to my way of thinking by now, Mark? But I think you came around to my way of thinking about these live-action remakes about three remakes ago. Uh, two remakes ago. Oh, 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 sorry, I overestimated. <laughs> Fair enough. So, I mean, I think everyone by now, I, I'm not saying that I'm some sort of cinematic Nostradamus who's <laughs> proven all of you stupid peasants wrong, but at the, I'm not saying I'm like Jim Sterling, who constantly makes accurate predictions about the shoddy state of the video game industry, but just in regards to Disney. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, I was right, you all were wrong, go and spin on it! Because, <laughs> uh, um, okay, uh, I have, okay, but it's, again, much like with New Mutants, I'm going to just get this out of the way straight over the bat. I actually think that this is the best Disney live-action remake so far. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I didn't see that coming. Having, having said, when I say that, I mean that in terms of its ability as a film independent of the original. Oh, okay. However, because I had two ways to look at this film. A remake of Disney's Mulan... And just a film on its own right. Because there have been a lot of films about the legendary Chinese figure Mulan. Most notably in China. They made quite a few films about her. But it's independent of Disney. Disney were not the first to come up with the story of Mulan. There is Disney's version. And this is a remake of Disney's version. And yet... And so in that regard, I think we can all agree it's shit. As a film in its own right, however, on its own merits, let's enter a fantasy world where the original Disney's Mulan does not exist. <gasps> I mean, it's still not great, but it's all right. Hmm. And I, 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 when I say all right, I mean all right in the worst possible sense. You remember how last week, New Mutants, I said that that was okay in the best possible sense. This is slightly better than that in the worst possible sense. It's two steps forward, two steps back, and we somehow end up in a different place altogether, somehow. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, I mean, oh, oh, so here's the thing, here's the thing. I really, really like Disney's Mulan. I really like the original. I think it's one of the few really good Disney movies. I, I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't have problems. There are some things I take issue with. But for the most part, I think it's really cool. I love the characters. I love the humor. I love the songs. It has the best montage song ever. Fuck you, all the Rocky movies. <laughs> Mulan did it best. And I, I, I like the characters. I like the side characters, the main characters, the art style, the action sequences. I, I, I think it's a genuinely good movie. And Eddie Murphy's motion and <laughs> kind of it's about. But even then, I could understand why other people would like him. And if here's the thing: if you go into this movie 
thinking you're going to get an accurate representation of that movie, you're not going to get it. But here's my problem. I mean, I, mean, I know we're barely five minutes in, but I'm always already a whirlpool of emotions, dear God. But here's the thing. I have criticized previous live-action Disney remakes for being too similar to their original movies. So it would be sort of hypocritical of me to praise this movie for being different. But I, I kind of... No, no, no. For, for being similar. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I... Here's the, people wanted this movie to be the same and it kind of does its own thing and I kind of respect it for it I just don't think it made a very good movie hmm. so it, it's annoying because people have people have wanted in the past movies that were like the movies they already had I don't know why they wanted them but they got them and they were shit hmm. and then we get this movie that's also not very good but it is different. It tries mm. new things. It does its own thing. It tries to stand its own two feet. I don't think it did it very well. But you kind of have to respect that. I'm sorry it I took when I got a bit confused at the, some point there. Just, oh, God, there's so much I want to talk about this movie. Well, and... well I can agree with you. The, what I've wondered from these remakes is that they do something different. And if my, unless my memory's wrong, this is Disney's first war movie. I could be wrong about that, but... It, it's for um, like, I, not often... I need to do more research Re because war for... in quotation marks is a sort of a vo vague concept vague. something that has fighting in it <laughs> I, I, I don't know yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know but you're right that they tried to do something different with it and that, that's actually kind of like the, the whole kind of problematic mutation with these remakes is that if they want to do something different they're kind of chained to the ground by the original so they've got to put Oh, we've got to put certain things in here, otherwise people won't think it, people won't like it. So it's kind of like nostalgia, nostalgic baiting in a, in a manner that's also enslaved by it, so to speak. It's, it's almost like the concept of doing these live action remakes is a fundamentally flawed one that doesn't work on any level. Yeah. I, I mean, if they want to do a new version of the story. We already have these movies, and these are not slightly older movies that are sort of faded from public consciousness, these are movies that Disney, on purpose, has purposely kept in the public's eye through just the, the overwhelming barrage of nostalgia. And now they're trying to capitalise on that, and admittedly, it has sort of worked box office-wise. Mm. Less so with this movie, which brings us very nicely to the fact that this movie that so many people don't like, that I don't like, that you don't like, the movie that is in many ways a gamble cost 30 fucking dollars well 20 pounds here but the, your point still stands still oh that's i mean I, it, it, it that's almost if you're going by like cheapest price you could possibly get at the cinema that's like oh that's like double would cost an average ticket over here in the cinema and here's the thing that's on top of the fact that people are already paying a subscription to the service that this film is fucking on exactly. you're already paying them oh oh but it's it's so you can watch it before december okay well fucking cool disney are fucking greedy we probably should wait to december I... yes yes if i can make you know I, I i was about to say i rarely say this but when it comes to disney I actually say it all the time if you really, really are a Mulan fan, Capers, and you want to see this movie, wait until fucking December. Although I would say skip it entirely, but you know, that's your decision. But don't give these utter hacks $30, 20 pounds, whatever. It's not worth it. I'd say it's just about worth the average ticket price, but even then, you'd have to take away the monthly subscription. God, this is so fucking greedy. It's, and you know, you know, Disney are going to try this shit again. I'm mm -hmm. going to make another prediction now. Disney will try the whole 30 fucking dollars thing for another movie another time. This is them testing the waters using coronavirus as an excuse. They could have just released it on there. But though they have to... I, I get it. They have to make money. I get it. They have to make a profit. I get that. I do. That's part of the film industry. Okay. Fine. Then fucking wait till the pandemic is over. People can go back to cinemas and release it then yes you're sitting on it for a while and yes you may lose a little bit of money but you know what at least you won't be greedy bastards we've got uh, we've got to have money if they released this 
film and it did cost a bit more but it was substantially less than $30 if it was just maybe $5 or something I don't know it's like okay guys we're gonna make a mo some money off of this we know you've already got a description so for that reason here it is but it's really really cheap then I'd say okay that's still kind of greedy but at least it's cheap 20 fucking pounds for this movie no absolutely not I refuse I didn't yeah, you didn't, because you're a sucker, Mark. <laughs> well, I knew we were going to watch this, we were going to review this, so I said the hell of it, might as well just see what it's like. Oh, dear. Whereas we're... I resort to other means, which I won't go into, according Wait, so, to the advice I, I of my lawyer. Point, how, come, how come they released the Lady in the Tramp remake, which I haven't been bothered to watch? They released that on Disney Plus without a fuss, but Mulan, Mulan, you have to pay an extra... Twenty crap pound for it. Well, because talking dog movies are a dime a dozen, you know, financially speaking these days. Mm. But this was a big budget action movie, with you know a lot of stunts, a lot of CGI, a lot of big names. So it fucking cost like two hundred million budget. And even it's China not... don't want it. Oh, we're gonna get into all of that. There's there's so much to unpack there. That we could honestly do an episode in of itself, but we'll try and talk about it with the length of time that we need to. We don't have a movie to talk about. <laughs> We've got a fucking movie to talk about, so let's just get right into it. And this movie starts with Mulan's father, played by... What's her name? Oh, by the way, if we get these names wrong, if we pronounce them wrong, Capers, we are sorry. <laughs> We're very okay? sorry. Okay? Which, I mean, most of these I think I'll probably be able to get, but... This actor's name, who I've seen in many things, he's a very good actor. Zima? Zima? Z I, we don't know if that's right. We could have probably researched it. In fact, we probably should have done, but we probably still would have gotten it wrong. That guy, he's Mulan's father. We start with him, and just apologies if we've gotten that wrong, okay? We don't want to get names wrong. We're trying. And so, and he starts over the uh, Summit Entertainment logo. Whoops. Like those little mountains. <laughs> it looks very... But anyway, he starts narrating the story. The original movie did not need a narrator, and it was substantially shorter amount of time than runtime than this movie, but whatever. And it's like, ancestors, you've heard many stories about Mulan, but this is mine. Oh, okay. A guy is now m narrating Mulan's story. Okay, that's great. Ah, uh, you get the exception because it, it's her dad. <laughs> maybe, but he narrates so infrequently and yeah. states things that are so fucking obvious to the audience. There's no real purpose to it. No, not really. It's like we can see what's happening on screen. Why are you explaining this to us? This is not Shawshank Redemption. It starts with like Mulan love fighting. But I didn't want her to fight because I was afraid she would bring dishonor upon us. We get that. In the, like, and here's the thing. It's annoying because one of the criticisms I have of the original is that Mulan only signs up to the uh, army because she wants to, you know, protect her dad. Which isn't a bad motivation. It's just a motivation that's entirely motivated, you know, by a guy. And just I, I think there could have been other reasons for it. Like... I, 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 I don't know. Because I mean, like, halfway through the movie, remember that scene where she climbs up the pole and stuff and she sticks with the army and becomes a much better soldier? Yeah. She clearly quite likes it. But the movie only presents Mulan as only being there for her dad. She displays no interest in helping out China or defending her home. She just wants to help her dad, which is fine, fair enough. But then they kick her out of the army, just like, pack up, go home, you're through. And the Mulan we presented to up at that point but should have just like, yeah, okay, fine. I gave him my best shot. At least my dad's not going to be in the army anymore. And also that adds to another problem, like if she, a woman in her physical prime, could not hack it in the army, then how the hell would her dad, who's got a dodgy leg, ever do it? He would not make it past basic training and he would be sent home too. There is no danger here. What the fuck? Everyone keeps on ignoring that from the... One bad film at a time. Actually, no, I like that film. Why am I... Crit <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a glass cage of emotion. Get a cup of coffee. I, I, that's what I don't need right now. I'm so hyped up. <laughs> Point is, this movie starts with young girl Mulan uh, doing some cool tricks with a big stick because she actually enjoys fighting. And I'm like, okay, that's actually kind of cool. I like the fact that this cat version of the character 
has an interest in fighting. Uh, that's something that I think that adds something that the original movie didn't have. Then they ruin it by introducing Chi. Hey. Now, leaving aside the fact that... Okay, okay, here's the thing. This movie completely misrepresents the legendary concept of Chi. This life energy thing that's prevalent in many Chinese stories and martial arts movies and, you know, fantasy stories. Completely misrepresents it. Having said that, though, it is a fictional thing, so you can kind of do whatever you want with it. But they're trying to represent it accurately, so it just ends up with like this whole mess. But let's leave that aside. Let's leave that aside and just focus on one important thing. Why the fuck is it in the movie? Ugh. Well, Mark, Ugh. why the fuck is it in the movie? I don't know. Explain, Mo Mark. Explain. How can I explain this if I don't understand why it's in the movie? It, not to mention it kind of shoots down the whole purpose of this film to begin with. It's like, women empowerment, but only if they have chi. Yeah, Ouch. Actually, uh, uh, it adds so many more problems than it solves. If I wouldn't say it solves any problems because, with this regard at least, the original Mulan didn't have problems. No. But the, and he's um okay, and it's uh, there is a way that the adding Chi to the movie could have worked. It does not. It does not work in the movie. So. We see Mulan is a bit of a troublemaker, and when I say troublemaker, I mean like a Disney version of a troublemaker, <laughs> like she just accidentally causes some mildly mild accidents to happen, and that means just, that she's a disgrace. Just, I get that it's- Just catch the chicken! Oh yeah, and then she goes on the roof- Why does she go on the roof? She's... The chicken's not on the roof! The chicken flies off the roof, I think, <laughs> at one point, and then she falls- she falls off the roof. And she uses like a big stick thing to slow her descent, and it ends up actually in a pretty cool looking stunt. And here's the thing though the action scenes in this movie, as someone who has seen more than his fair share of martial arts movies, I think are actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so, someone who is much more of a martial arts expert will be able to, you know, pick out and analyze the flaws much better than I could. I'm just a casual viewer. I've seen. Like every Bruce Lee movie, but that that's basically it, and a few other Chinese martial art movies. But I, I, they're not fantastic, they're not completely stand out, but they do their job. They're yeah. much better than something that you might have seen in, say, like Iron Fist. <laughs> well, yeah. that's a fucking well, low bar. Well, Iron Fist. Well, Iron Fist was like limited, like an alleyway and a dark room. So <laughs> fair enough. But I mean, here's the thing: I had a expectation of the level of martial arts present in a live action Disney Mulan film and those expectations were very low mm. this movie exceeded them you may have a difference of opinion in that in that matter and that's fair enough yeah. i just thought it was a pretty cool stunt and then it was and then the parents are talking played by Zama and um Rosalind Chow is an actor who, who i really like has been in lots of great things most notably you know Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Ah. Love her in that. Hmm. So, uh, and they, the, the parents basically having discussion like, okay, so Mulan, she's such a troublemaker. She's going to bring this honor. The matchmaker will never find her a match. Oh, but her sister's so great. And it's like, wait, wait Mulan has a sister? Where's the dog? Where's the little brother? Where's the grandmother? Yeah, where, the yeah where's June Foray? Where's where, the dog? Where's the fucking grandmother? She was my favorite character. Yeah, we want to see her cause, cause mass mayhem and cause a huge pile up. Yeah, because she was awesome and funny and she's just not in the movie, but they give her the sister who adds nothing to the movie. She's, she's, a, just she's kind a wet of there. She's a wet blanket. She ruins everything. Well, I don't want to say she ruins everything, but she doesn't add anything to the movie, and it's just there as a, I guess, a juxtaposition for Mulan, mm. showing that she's the ideal daughter, Mulan isn't. But here's the thing, whilst we see a lot of Mulan, we barely see anything of the sister. And indeed, this whole her being a perfect daughter thing is somewhat contradicted later on when they take Mulan to the matchmaker, oh, and... And then there's a spider that crawls on the table. Why no one points this out, I don't know. I guess Mulan is the only, and the sister are the only one who sees it. 
but then the sister screams, knocks the table over, Mulan catches this teapot thing, but then, you know, accidentally drops it, and they act like Mulan was entirely to blame. No, no, no. Yep, sister yep. screamed, sister knocked over table, and she tried to save the valuable teapot before it broke. Well, her, well, like, well, her hair fell down, her face, and that for some reason caused her to break her crane stance. Unless you don't know. Uh, here's the thing, here's the thing. This movie is set during an incredibly patriarchal, incredibly restrictive, incredibly sexist time, so we can't ascribe our modern sensibilities onto it. Yes, very true. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a movie with fucking phoenixes, magic users, and big flippy wire work stunts that couldn't possibly be done in real life. So actually, you know what? Maybe this movie isn't based in real life, and we can put our modern sensibilities on it. Stupid matchmaker. And that's the, that's the thing. Okay. Uh, at, least, at, least, at least in in the original, the cricket kind of screws things up. And then Mulan gets Mulan's a klutz, so it's kind of like her fault there. The matchmaker's a jerk. But here, if I recall, it's actually the matchmaker who kind of kicks the table over after the girl freaks out the spider. So it's her fault. And uh, God, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. This movie it comes pretty apparent rather quickly that they've done to Mulan what they did to Rey in the Star Wars trilogy movies. Yep. In that she can do everything awesome. Because here's the thing about, that I like about the original. In the original, she was admittedly not a natural fighter, but she learned and became a great fighter. Mm. There was a progression. You know, she had obstacles to overcome and she overcame them. Here's the thing, in this movie, Mulan already has Chi, even though Chi is a sort of a life force that everyone is supposed to have. But only the special can tap into it in this movie, I guess. Yeah. And 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 so there's no progression. She's awesome from the start and can do all sorts of cool tricks from the start. And they, they try and present that as the obstacle to overcome. It's the societal obstacle. And fair enough, I guess. But here's the thing. Um, then when she leaves that society and pretends to be a man... What has she got to overcome? Well, apparently, and we'll get onto that a bit later, it's just the fact that she's lying to everyone. I... As, as far as I'm aware, Mulan doesn't actually have a character arc in this. What's her flaw? No, it's... I mean, uh, no flaws, no character arc. All she's got to do is basically convince... Uh, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting I mean, ahead least, of ourselves. At least Ray kind of had a, 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 a motivation to kind of, like, realise she was worth something. What does Mulan have? Mulan kind of has that motivation, but like I said, we're going to get onto that later. Meanwhile, while all that is going on, it turns out that the big bad Huns... Oh, wait, no, they're oh. not the Huns. They're the... Morons? The, 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 the joke is there. Everyone's busy. Oh, look, morons! Huh. They never do that. I mean... Not the Huns. The, the, the not Huns. Um, Rurons, historically speaking, were... Uh, this group of people from uh, northern Asia, well, they're sort of in between Tibet and Mongolia, as far as I, I'm able to understand, and they're sort of... I, I don't know anything about them. I don't know anything about them culturally or historically or anything, so... Yeah, but they're apparently a real people, and they are now uh, attacking China. Why? Well, in the original movie, the Huns attacked China because... China was there. Let's be honest, the villains, was genuinely menacing in the original, mm. um, were not that well fleshed out and no. developed. They were just sort of stereotypical bad guys. There was no dimension to them. There was no, no personality, really. Even though Sean Hu was kind of awesome. No, he no, he was intimidating. He awesome was. and intimidating are two very different things. Darth Vader is awesome and intimidating because he has an actual character. Mm. Sean Yu was intimidating... But the, he's just like, hey, your emperor put up a giant wall. I which means it. I have to attack him now because I've got a small dick. Hey, your emperor won a chess match. Well, I'm going to flip the whole board over and force him to play croquet. And also, it doesn't help the fact that they gave him, like, yellow eyes with, like, black sclera. I'm, I, I'm evil. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of monstrous and... Possibly a bit racist. I don't know. I like the bit where he shot. Where he how many messages? How many me messages does it take to send a message? And the guy with the arrow is like just one, and he shoots the guy. 
yeah, that that was a like I said, very intimidating in terms of being a villain. They nailed it, mm. but there's there's no character to them. No, no, no. Here no. in this movie, I guess there's a character, but they don't. Here's the thing: they don't really go into it that much. No. But apparently, the lead of the Ruins, Bori Khan, is out for revenge because the Emperor of China killed his father, and okay. that's it. Can we get some context, please? Why did he kill your father? Some, you know. we, we don't get it. No context, no reasoning beyond that. And that could make for a very interesting character, like the cycle of revenge, the fact that maybe his father was a very good person, it turns out, and you know, was forced into war and lost everything because of it. Or maybe he could conduct it himself with honor, but the emperor refused to see it. Maybe he could make, paint the emperor as sort of this morally gray figure, compared to how they do in the movie. But there's lots of things you could do with it. They just don't do any of it. It's very good at walls. I, yeah, it's just, it's just because and like if you're going to expand on these characters, actually expand on the characters. But uh, and this is where the oh this is oh this is so weird this is so weird this is so weird. So helping Bori Khan is this shape-shifting witch whose name I actually don't think gets mentioned in the movie. No. But in according to Wikipedia, she's called Zhang Yang. Zhang Yang, I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I, I don't know, but she's played by Gong Li. Hmm. And, and honestly, this character is my favourite bit of the movie. Hmm. But... Here's the, here's the thing, here's the thing. We mentioned Phoenix Observer, and he, here's the thing. The original movie had fantastical elements into it. It had ghosts and a little dragon voiced by Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. <laughs> and, you know, a somewhat anthropomorphized cricket. You know, so there were fantastical elements. Okay, fine. This movie t gets rid of all of those fantastical elements and adds in a bunch of completely different fantastical elements and I don't know why. Well, and well, according to the Wikipedia article of the animated film, the Chinese were offended by Mushu because he was uh, a caricature of Chinese dragons, which are quite sacred to their culture. So, okay, fair days, that's fine. Let's replace him with a phoenix. Or you could just have an, a Chinese dragon in the movie mm. that is faithful to the Chinese legend and isn't, you know, insulting. Isn't, isn't donkey. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to offend anyone, but the phoenix, like every single time, it doesn't help the phoenix. Is there's a phoenix in this movie, by the way, capers? If you know, it seems weird that we bring this up out of nowhere. Don't worry, the movie brings it up out of nowhere too. Uh, the movie, the, the movie phoenix is sort of coloured almost exactly like Mushu from the original. Oh, and also so Mulan breaks its statue like the great stone dragon. So every time we see the Phoenix, every single American movie watcher is going to be thinking, why aren't we watching Mushu right now? <laughs> and, and so, okay, here's the thing, though. This shapeshifting character, whose name I'm not going to say again, Gong Li, yeah, <laughs> uh, she is the most interesting part of the movie to me because she is a really interesting character. It turns out because of her shape-shifting powers and the fact that she's a witch. She has been shunned from civilized society, even though she hadn't done anything wrong. So now she's out at herself with the Rorans because uh, Bori Khan has promised her that in the new order that he's going to bring about, she'll have a home and be accepted by society, and that's all she really wants. I'm just like, okay, that's actually a really interesting character. I mean, she's sort of this tragic figure that's stuck on the side of bad, but only because she wants to be accepted. That's interesting to me. That's a relatively nice addition. Why isn't she the main bad guy? Because... Bad. Because you got to stay true to the original, even though we're not. Yes! Like, if you're oh, going yes. to do something different, go all the way. Have these wandering nomad tribes be led by her. Yeah, like, she, can, she can possess people. Like, oh, oh, here's an idea. Here's an idea. Go the full for Ragnarok. Have her be like the sister of the emperor. But be, when they find out she had magic powers, she was deposed and thrown out and even her own brother, you know, sh shunned her. And so she went away and has come back to reclaim what is rightfully hers. 
we could, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a bit stereotypical, but I could get behind that, especially with the really sympathetic backstory. Here, she plays second banana to this Bori Khan. At first, it seems like they're partners, but then it becomes increasingly clear that he thinks of her as just another slave. And it's just like, and he, he admits her to that later on in the movie. It's just like, yes, you're basically a slave. You're a shun dog. And don't worry, dog, I'll give you a home. <laughs> and she's like, dude, you know I can, like, tear your throat open with, like, one move, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be insulting you, person who has magic powers. Oh, wait, they don't say that in the movie. It was just me in my head with my <laughs> actual human brain. If you could turn to a bird and possess people, I mean, you don't want to intimidate someone like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. What if it seemed like at first he was calling the shots, but then she possessed him as, she's, as it's shown she can do later in the, in the movie? And she runs the show from now on, and her men, the men think they're taking the orders from Bori Khan, but it's actually her. No, we, we, we just have to have him. I, 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 I don't know. Anyway, we can't judge this movie by what we want it to be. We have to judge it by what it is. Okay, <sighs> so they attack a bunch, uh, attack a small town, I guess, using some all right stunts. I thought that's a cool scene where Bori Khan like catches an arrow. Yeah. We mentioned Bill Ragnarok that you've lifted that straight from Loki's playbook. Remember that. He caught an arrow. Remember that for later on. Yeah. And they kill everyone inside of it and word gets to the Emperor played by Jet Li. They dubbed him over. I thought they dubbed him over. I was going to ask you, did they dub him over? They did. Because... Because I, I know that Jet Li kind of has his voice that's a bit lighter than you might expect to come out of most people like him, but the guy they got to dub him goes way over the top. He's just like, send a, th- a message to the garrisons. We're going to completely crush them. And it's coming out of Jet Li, who's giving kind of like a reserved, much more dignified performance. And this dubbed <laughs> guy, whoever he is, is just... Sounding like he wouldn't be out of place in a Saturday morning cartoon. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, exactly, because I like that both Jet Li's character and the animated version of the Emperor are both very calm and collected. And then you give Jet Li's version this Brian Blessed wannabe <laughs> for a dub over. What a silly move. And obviously, it's also insulting to Jet Li's performance as an actor. Like, it's not like the guy can't speak English. He does speak English. Yes! To what? Uh, 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 anyway, and so word gets to Mulan's village that uh, one man from every family must serve in the Imperial Army. And again, no one says, hey, maybe the guy with the leg that he has to wear a brace on just to walk properly and can't indeed walk without a cane shouldn't be in the army. That's just going to be a waste of like an armor and a sword and training. Y- y- why? Why? It's just like, okay, we're starting a big... Like, in our modern society, in our world, if there a draft came up, if conscription happened, okay, so one person from every household must serve. Who's in this household? Uh, it's just me, and I'm in a wheelchair. Sniper! Um, perfect! I, I, I don't know. I, I, just like, I, get, I get that it's supposed to be like he's really dignified, and he's choosing to serve, even though... He knows. In, fa- in fairness to the to this movie, unlike the original, that kind of skirts around it. In this movie, they basically say, "Oh yeah, your dad's totally gonna die, but you know what? He's willing to do his duty, and we gotta support that. And we just gotta accept the fact that he's gonna die." Yeah, and there's the, the, I, I do like the scene where he he kind of falls over, and the bloke on the horse is like, "Oh god," is like, "Oh god, we have to force this guy to go walk." So we're very unfair to him. It's like, it's, it's not like a. a they don't skirt around it, like you said. They they acknowledge that this that Milan's father is crippled, but they respect his opinion that he wants to go serve the emperor regardless. Yeah, and e- and even if he did definitely have to join the army, there's other roles, like you said, that he could do. He, he, he could be, you know, a commanding officer or a scout or um, I I don't know. There's there's, there's tons of non-combat yeah. roles where he doesn't have to fucking walk. That he could do. The army is more than just infantrymen. Yeah. And he's already served in the military before. So, like, he's done his service. That's probably, that's probably got the, his limp anyway. 
I just think this is the this is the problem I have with both this version and the original one is that once you inject any semblance of common sense into it, and when I say common sense, I mean common sense, not realism, because <laughs> realism in movies has no place. But when you actually think about anything logically, the the conflict, the central conflict, or at least the jumping off point for the conflict, doesn't work. You need to find a different way around, and they don't really do it. But like I said, they do acknowledge the fact that it's bullshit, so that's something at, at least. Mm. And and then, so this is a whole big conflict inside Mulan, below between her and her dad, then he's, she meets him like when he's sharpening his sword, and they sort of reconnect. I, I don't know. Here's the thing, in the original, they left on bad terms. Here, they kind of reconcile a little bit before she leaves. I did like this, that and, scene too. Uh, yeah, it was it was a good scene, but it sort of undercuts the you know the conflict with Mulan. Mm. And speaking of the conflict with Mulan, I mean Where it's it? there definitely. But despite the fact that this this movie is m quite longer than the original, it doesn't really explore it. And you know why? Because they don't have any of the fucking songs. Exactly. And I, I, here's the thing: I like the songs in the original. And I'd rather they not use them than use them half acidly. But here's the thing. They do include the music from the songs. They even quote the songs every now and again. But they don't actually use the songs. And the songs in the original were used to further the story and examine the characters, you know, conflict and development. When will my reflection show who I am inside? That whole song, that was a big, huge thing. And apparently, I was not aware of this. But you know, when I was doing some research for this movie, I came across the fact that a lot of people were upset that that song isn't really in this movie because a lot of people, years and years after the original song came out, the original movie came out, really liked that song because it's, uh, it's been sort of adopted by the LGBTQIA oh. plus community. Oh, I didn't know that. Because apparently, a lot, of, in particular, a lot of trans people who, a big part of their identity can be about who they are on the inside, not matching who they are on the outside, at least until they transition. Um, a song about, you know, not being who you are on the outside, who you are on the inside, that has a big impact. Mm. And so, and considering some of the other problems this movie has had production-wise with gay people, like uh, Shang, uh, <laughs> it's it, it's a real, real shame. But here's the thing: leaving that aside, leaving aside the emotional attachment a lot of people have to that song and the other songs, they were very good at, like I said, at progressing the story and getting things along. Even though reflection. It's, comparatively speaking, a relatively short song. It gets across a lot of emotion and a lot of character and a lot of plot very effectively and very efficiently. And this movie does not do it. it, it it's there. The conflict is there. You can see you know, that Mulan is conflicted between who she feels like she is and who society expects her to be. But they don't explore it. It's, it's like with the ruins, like Bori Khan. Again, it's there, but it's not. It's a pale reflection of development, ironically enough. Hi -oh, hi -oh. It's uh, So... So, she steals her dad's uh, armor and sword. They missed the montage. Where's the montage? Yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing bit of animation they do. It's, they cut, she cuts her hair... And all that, and but even when she just she doesn't cut her hair in this movie. No, exactly. Even though that would help her pass for a man. No. Yeah. She just bunches it up real tight, I guess. And she wears um, what does she do to hide her her uh, breast? She wears like a silk thing, doesn't she? The under her armor. Well, no, she like does this big like leather strappy thing. Fair enough. But we don't see her like with the sword and her charging out with a horse. She just she's just sort of gone. Gone. And then she just sort of. It immediately cuts to her family discovering the fact that she's gone and, the fa and they, their realisation, oh shit, we can't tell anyone she's gone because if we do, they'll kill her. It's so rushed. Yeah, we, it, we and, need and the and phoenix. Then, oh, no, oh no, here's the thing though, before we meet the phoenix, no, no, Mulan has to wander aimlessly in the countryside, get lost, apparently run out of rations really fucking quickly, 
and then she sees the phoenix, and the phoenix is just, it's just there. It's just there. She sees the phoenix, and she's like, oh, cool, a phoenix, huh, legendary mythical beast, how you doing? And then the phoenix just guides her to the army encampment like it was one of those bird game mechanics things from fucking Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. Uh, the new Japanese samurai game from Sucker Punch. Oh, okay. Tsushima is actually called, I mispronounced it earlier. It Because there's this thing in the game where instead of having a map for waypoints, or like a mini map on the, on the screen, you see a little bird fly past, and then you follow that bird to objectives. Okay. That's weird. Is it voiced by Eddie, this movie. Is it voiced by Eddie Murphy? I don't know. There's no Eddie Murphy in this movie. Point is, she gets to the... to the camp, which is run by Commander Shang. Nope. Nope. No, no, it's not. They cut it in half. <laughs> yeah, okay, so here's the thing, here's the thing. Disney cut the character Shang out from the movie. Now, supposedly, I call bullshit, but that's just me, the reason why they did that was because of the <sighs> Me Too movement. Wait, I'm going to say what I think about this in just a sec. And the idea of having Mulan's, to quote, sexual love interest, ugh, not what he was in the original um, sexual love interest be a commanding officer who has authority over her wasn't very in very good taste and so they cut the character out of the movie now here's the thing one I highly doubt that that, that is true I think they did it because of biphobia because a lot of people have you know made the assumption that Shang might be bisexual. I'm not entirely sure that was what was going on in the original movie, but I'm not going to deny people their headcanon or interpretation. Second of all, yes, yes. You know, the love interest of a character being so someone who has a lot of authority over them, like a commanding officer in the army, is weird and wrong and not okay. Here's the thing, though. Um... I'm pretty sure that's not why they did that. I, 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 I don't know for certain, but I almost guarantee that that's not why they did it. And they're just using it as excuse. And also, side note, um, really, you they say they're doing that in response to the hashtag Me Too movement, and not because you know that's just not a thing that should be done. Like, let's say. Me Too never existed. I'm very glad it does exist, but let's say it... Well, I'm not glad it does because it, it's happened because of yeah, horrible you, sexual we know abuses. What you, we know what you mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, but hey, but let's say, say it never existed. It still wouldn't be okay for someone to get involved with their commanding officer because they have a position of authority over them and it's an unequal power dynamic. You don't need a popular hashtag on Twitter to tell you that that's not okay! No kidding! Uh, well, you know that because you are a fully functional adult man. Disney, however, is run by reactionary children who don't understand these big concepts about, you know, adult life and instead are at the whims of popular trends. Regardless if those popular trends are good or not, and Me Too is inherently good, spreading awareness about that kind of thing is inherently a good thing, but if you do, you should, you should do that, or rather not do that, because it's a good thing, and not because lots of people retweet it. God! Stop being stupid, Disney. Ah, uh, and so what they did was, when there was a huge backlash against the removal of the character, they said, oh, shit, crap, we can't please anyone. Um, okay, we will have Shang. But he's not going to be Shang. Now he's going to be Donnie Yen and this other guy. This other guy. And here's the thing. And here's the thing. They don't even call the other guy Shang. He could have been Shang, but he's not he's Shang. Who is Chen. he? What's his name? Chen. It's... Yeah, Chen, played by Yon Son An. And there's no reason why this guy couldn't be Shang. Just call him Shang. You don't even need to change the character. Yeah, I mean, Donnie Yen could have been his father. Just, yeah, yeah. I, they, I wouldn't even say that was necessary. He's Commander Tung. He doesn't even need to be his father. But 
even if he did, if he was, that would be fine too. It, it could it could completely and one hundred percent work, but they didn't because they know they know that China is very homophobic, and lots of these other countries are very homophobic, and so they don't want to have any inclusion of any character that could possibly be gay. And yet, despite that, this new character Chen still comes off a little bit bi. <laughs> And I 100% I could be wrong. Maybe I've got this completely wrong. And they did all of these decisions for all the right reasons. And they deliberately made the character kind of by on purpose because they wanted to. But you know what? I fucking doubt it. Exactly. I don't, what's dumber? This or turn the cricket into a human? Wait, they did that? Yeah, John Yu plays cricket. He's the guy that cries. Oh, God, yes! I just completely blanked on that. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, sure, they cut Mushu out, but they keep the cricket in, and they turn him into a human. Look, Mushu, I'm a real boy now. <laughs> the irony there. At, uh, mm, uh, okay, so she goes in. She's not into the army in camp. She's not Ping now. She's something else. Um, I, I, I will say this. I will say this. In the mo to the movie's credit... Um, in the original, she's Fa Mulan, but actually, the legendary figure is called Hua Mulan, and they get that right. I'll get a point in your favor, movie. Fair enough. But uh, and so she immediately gets into a fight with this Chen guy for no good reason. It actually kind of makes Mulan look kind of stupid because he's just trying to help her, and she just she just like draws her sword at him. He's like, he's "Whoa! I'm just trying to help." But anyway, and so she gets the dressing down from Commander Tong and all that. And uh, I will say, Donnie Yen, I, I like him in this movie. But then I've liked him in almost everything I've seen him in since Rogue One. Mm. Because he was one of the few good characters I like him. And it just reminds me of his character in that movie. But anyway. And then so the training begins. We don't get, you know, <laughs> make a man out of you. Even though the... You know what would have been cool? If instead of Donnie Yen, they cast Jackie Chan. Oh, that would have been got, awesome. And they got him to sing yeah. Make a Man Out of You, which he actually did yeah. for the original movie in Chinese. I and know. it was fucking awesome. Yeah, because it's Jackie Chan. Apparently Jackie Chan's a really good singer. I didn't know this until a little while ago. And he did a version of Make a Man Out of You in, uh, I believe it's Cantonese. Yeah. And it, and it was fucking awesome. Is there nothing he can't do? Uh, apparently, uh, pay taxes. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Paradise Papers. Do, 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 do. Bringing that one back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, oh, God. Uh, I do love you, Jackie, but come on. Anyway. Uh, and so they begin the training. But here's the thing. This is, say, again, the same problem with Ray. She's already awesome. Why does she need training? Like, so... To point of comparison, Rey in the original, uh, in, in Force Awakens, can fight really awesome, survive on her own, and use the Force perfectly, and mind tricks, even though she's got no training. So then later when she does get training, it's just like, what else is there to teach her, really? And uh, Maybe there's something, but they don't really come up with something, because she's awesome at everything. In this movie, she's awesome at everything. And the filmmakers realise this, realise they've written themselves into a corner, and so like, oh shit, we need to somehow hold her back. How? Um, I don't know. And if they don't even hold her back, she does the training perfectly fine. She doesn't do the awesome flips and kicks and spinny wacha moves that she was doing earlier in the movie. But she comes across as perfectly competent. So we need to elevate her back to superhero level. Why is she not at that level yet? Oh, because she feels really torn up about the fact that she's lying. Okay, great. Um, and this movie gets a whole thing about how you need to be true to yourself. You need to speak your truth. Yeah, okay, great. You're kind of missing one small problem. Um, if she tells the truth, she'll be murdered! <gasps> it's so fucking arrogant because you can tell what they were trying to do with this, this this sort of thing like be true to yourself yes there's an lgbtqia plus angle you can pursue with that or any sort of oppressed person anyone who feels at odds with society could easily identify with that i get it i do but here's the thing we live in a world where when someone sometimes 
does speak their truth, they get slapped the fuck down. And I hate it when companies like this, when studios like this, when movies like this, arrogantly say, oh yes, you need to speak your truth, and completely ignore the fact that there is sometimes real danger in doing that. Mm -hmm. There's danger even in this movie, and yet the movie sort of shows that she's been held back the whole holding herself back, rather. It's not other people holding back. It's not society's fault that Mulan isn't doing as well as she's supposed to be doing. It's Mulan's fault for not being true to herself. Even though if she is true to herself, she will be executed. Morons. Arrogant fucking morons. Feels. It's like saying to a trans person in... Bible Belt America, oh, you need to come out and speak your truth and fly your trans flag proudly. Except the fact that for many people, that can be genuinely dangerous. Beyond harassment, beyond even abuse, people can be, and indeed have been, up to the present day, murdered because of it. And I'm not saying that this movie is okay with that, I'm just saying that this movie is completely ignoring that. Talk about broken morals. It's The problem isn't Mulan. The problem is society. If they pursued that angle, fine. Okay, I wouldn't have an issue. But they don't. They heavily imply that... They, all but state that it's the problem is Mulan needs to reveal who she is and needs to be true and only then will she be the true warrior she needs to be. And what a surprise when eventually she does that in the movie, they fucking reject her. Not to mention the fact that in the original movie, the moral of the story was, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say better, but it, it made a bit more sense because her secret is discovered accidentally. And is done so while she sacrificed for them. And so we can clearly see the fault isn't with her, it's with everyone else. Because it happens right after she saves everyone. And when they find out she's a girl, they're just like, Nope, oh, reject you, reject, reject, shun, 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 dishonor, dishonor, disgrace. And we feel bad for Mulan, and we don't like those other people because they're the ignorant assholes who uh, didn't accept her. And there's an element of that in this movie, going ahead a little bit, but... For the most part, it's just like, oh, finally, Mulan, will you finally reveal who you are entirely of your own accord? Oh, how brave. G good for you, but that's not how the real world works, unfortunately, sometimes. In an ideal world, they wouldn't completely accept her. In an ideal world, everyone would be accepted in our world. But sadly, that is not always the case. And you need to properly represent that. They fucking didn't. And, but then... She starts, you know, releasing her chi, you know, and everyone's just like, oh, wow, you're so awesome. And at first she's just like, oh, God, I can't believe I use my chi, even though I've been taught by my dad never to do it. Conceal, don't feel, conceal, don't feel. Do you get the <laughs> reference? Do you get the reference? And, and, uh, and then, but then it was like, wow, not ping. You were awesome. I, I don't, I'm not going to bother to learn a new name. You were awesome. And she's like, wow, I'm finally being accepted. Oh, but they already think I'm... And it's, it's such a fucking missed message. But that... That is... That is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is this. In the original movie, Mulan was struggling, but then she succeeded by adhering to the training persevering and revealing her own inner strength mm. in this movie she doesn't succeed because of special training or perseverance or her own indomitable spirit she succeeds because she's got magic powers and is special I think that's the biggest fault with this movie when compared to the original because in my god, this is a long rant. This is probably the longest extended one I've been on since I've done Podgapers. But here's the thing, here's the thing. In the original, it kind of shows that the society, again, is at fault. And that women can contribute to the army and can do that sort of physical thing. And 
It's not because they're special, but it's just because they're the same as everyone. That's... It, it was... They, she was supposed to be treated equally, she wasn't treated equally, but then she proved herself to be an equal. In this movie, she's not an equal, she's superior to everyone else. But she's the only one we're not going to see. So, you know, when a little girl sits down, maybe I'm reading too much to it, but when a little girl sits down to watch the original movie, she could see herself as Mulan. But in real life. In this movie, oh well I don't have magic chi power, so I guess I couldn't do that. Like... Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's the difference between believing that you could be Luke Skywalker and believing that you could be Princess Leia. Any one of us could be Princess Leia, maybe not the princess part, but still. I'm sure I could pull off the we hair. Could, we, yeah, we could, we could all rise to the occasion and be a leader like Leia, but not everyone could be a Jedi, just inherent to be a Jedi. And that's not to say that being a Jedi isn't a power fantasy, I get it. And other people would have a power fantasy over being this version of Mulan. And that's fine in its own right. But when you already have a, a movie that had a much more feminist and much more better integrated story-wise message than this, it just feels so out of place. Right, take a breather. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile... The Khan's army continues to advance. Oh yeah, I forgot about them. Oh, uh, oh, the, here's the thing. And then they attack another town again. It's basically the same as the last one. But here's the thing. I've noticed with a lot of the fight scenes with Gong Li, um, the camera work is really fucking obnoxious. Like, there's so many quick edits. And they, like, I'm not a cinematographer, again, so... I can't analyze it properly, but I do know, just as as an audience goer, it was really hard to follow, and it was so quick and so fast, it was almost nausea-inducing. Yeah, I, I can't stand quick shots during action sh scenes. I mean, that's an issue I have with Batman Begins, where the fighting is so up close and like, what's going? Wait, wait, what's going on? What's going on? There's like thirty different shot cuts in the space of oh, half a minute. It's very irritating to watch. And here's the thing, in most martial arts movies, at least as far as I'm aware, there aren't a lot of quick edits. No. There's a lot of there's a lot of like sweeping camera movements. There's some excellent camera work and things like the raid and things like that. But they keep the camera relatively still and don't do that many edits because they want to show off the impressive martial arts that's going on. Yeah. And here it seems like they're kind of just trying to distract from it, even though I think, personally, most of the martial arts in this movie is pretty good. I think Gong Li does a good job with the martial arts stuff and incorporating her magical attacks into it but when I, I can't why well, I say that I can't really tell because the camera work is a fucking obnoxious <laughs> as I said with my when I reviewed Transformers 5 it's like having a camera in a washing machine that's flying for the air you know what I miss what Bumblebee oh we miss Bumblebee too I, you know I, I've been thinking about that movie a lot lately I don't know why I just I it was 2018, the world seemed... Normal. Well, in hindsight, it actually... In hindsight, it seemed sane, but at the time, it felt quite chaotic. But you know what? Bumblebee was just a nice little ocean of calm yeah. in that somewhat chaotic time that, frankly, I would trade our chaotic times now for in a heartbeat. But it was just... Uh, that was such a cool movie. <sighs> such a fun movie. Well acted. Well scripted. Yeah. Just a perfectly solid movie. That reminded me of the Iron Giant in very good ways. Yeah, why, and why aren't we reviewing that one? <laughs> because there's no reason to review it. Because as far as I know, they're not doing a sequel to it. Because not yet. Haley Steinfeld got left behind by Bumblebee in that movie, well, and they kind of wanted to tie it to the Michael Bay. Oh uh, well, they 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 did announce that all the other Transformers films are no longer canon. So hooray! <laughs> what are we talking about Transformers for? <laughs> Well, you brought it up, and that got me to Bumblebee. Can we not just talk about Bumblebee? Can we talk about Bumblebee? Movie? What? No? No, no, yeah. we got to talk about this movie. Okay, ah. so... So... Uh, during... The, because she unleashed a she, Donnie Yen's character sort of takes her under his wing. And I will admit, I kind of like the scenes between uh, Donnie Yen and the actor that plays Mulan, Yifei Lu. And... Uh, particularly... Donnie Yen. I thought he was, he was a very, you know, kindly, mentory kind of figure. 
Which would mean me think, oh shit, he's gonna die. But he actually didn't, yeah. so shows what I know. It's too expensive. Uh, but it's just like, no, you're, you're you're really a good fighter, not Ping. Because, you know, you're true to yourself and, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to hide. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it's heightening me in the conflict. And, and, and so they get sent off to war, but not before declaring an oath of loyalty, bravery, truth. But that truth, truth catches in Mulan's throat. Look, look, okay, okay, so yeah, she's pretending to be someone else, but you know what? She's living her truth. She's, she is, I mean, she's finally sh displaying her chi powers, and like, she hasn't really altered her personality that much. And then you could argue, actually, in the original movie, she did that far more. She acted, tried to act like how she thought men acted, and um, it was funny. Remember that? Remember how funny the original movie was? This movie tries to be funny, but it just comes across as awkward most of the time. I'm gonna hit you so hard, it'll make your ancestors dizzy. Yeah. There's a million and one lines you can quote from that movie that will be genuinely funny. And I, admittedly, I'm glad they tried, because when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought, oh, that looked really grim dark. They're not gonna crack a single joke. And in fairness, they do try a couple of jokes and a couple of lighthearted scenes. They're fine. They're fine. Some of them work, some of them really don't. But anyway, but then they have to go off to war. And remember in the original movie when they're in the middle of a girl worth fighting for and they suddenly stop like half through the movie? Yeah. And see a desolated visit village, buildings burned, little girls dull, lost in all the soot and debris. And it's this really big, sobering moment. In this movie, they just cut straight to it. They're just like, one scene that's not connected to everything, boom, cut to the scene, they're already at the village, and it's just like, oh wow, they killed everyone. Let's move on and not let the emotion of the scene sink in. Nope. We got time for that. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so, then they encounter the Khan's army, they engage them, a couple of them split off from the main group, so Mulan's sort of regiment chase after him, except... Well, it's just Mulan. None of her other, you know, main character friends join her. I don't, I don't know. I don't care about any of those characters, Venice. I don't care about Chen or Cricket or any of those other characters. The only characters I care about are Donnie Yen, <laughs> Mulan's dad, Mulan's mum, kind of, and I guess Mulan? But only because she's the one we spent the most time with. Oh, and of course, um, Gong Li's character. But anyway, so they're chasing these people, and I will say... No matter what you might think of the stunts in this movie, you might think they're good, you might think they're bad. There's a stunt that the Rorans do where they sort of like hop off their horse like while they're running, do a little skip on the ground and then come back onto the horse but facing the other way in order to fire their bows. I thought that was kind of cool. Let's see them get into contest with Legolas. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't think a top killing an elephant, but... <laughs> yeah. And they start firing arrows at her. She manages to dodge them, fire back, which ends with her ch or most of her, well, everyone around her dying. She's the only one who lived. I guess none of her other soldiers thought to fire arrows back at the people who were shooting arrows at them. What are these, what are these weird things for? What are, these bow, what are the bows for? Yeah. Guys, what do we do if we catch them? <laughs> Boy, And we kill them. How do we do that? With arrows. I, I, What's an arrow? I don't know. But anyway, so she chases them into like this, I don't know what it is, like a geyser, a hot springs sort of thing. It looks like, you know, rejected scene from the Lion King in the elephant's graveyard. <laughs> and then a hawk flies down and knocks her off her horse. No, that a hawk cannot hit a human woman with enough force to knock her off her horse. But then it reveals the horse is, in fact, Gong Li's character. And they sort of have a, we're not so different, you and I. <laughs> Except, here's the thing, here's the thing. I actually like the back and forth between them. Gong Li is just like, I was your age when society completely rejected me. But I'm working to build something here where we can be accepted. You're a woman in the army. If they discover you, you know, you're going to be actually fucking killed. You know, you don't have to, you know, play by their rules. We can make our own rules. And here's the thing. You might not agree with Gong Li's character's actions in the movie, but 
Here's why I think she's a great character, beyond just being an antagonist, although she is quite a good antagonist. She has understandable motivations and a very sympathetic character. Even though she kills people in the movie, you understand why she's doing it. She's a fully fleshed out, developed character. This is why I think she should have been the main character, because Bori Khan, he wants to revenge for his dad. Okay, cool. But we don't spend any time with that. We do with her. Out of all the characters in the movie, this is the one that actually gets the most, I think, genuinely good development. Mm, I pretty much agree, you know. Uh, granted, when I first watched the film, I was like, wait a minute, a witch, a witch in a martial arts movie? Isn't it just Ronan 47 all over again? But now that you've, you've, you know, you've put, hit it on the head, she actually is quite developed as a character. But I don't know why they didn't make her the main antagonist. I don't know. But anyway, she... And Mulan's just like, I'll never join you. You killed my father. No, <laughs> I am your father. You're a woman. Oh, well, uh, then I'll just throw a big shuriken at you. <laughs> and and she supposedly kills Mulan. Oh, yeah, movie. I'm sure she's actually killed Mulan. You know, we buy that fake out. You got to do it. No. I'll do it yeah. Oh, but then, oh, but then, the narrator, her dad, that you <laughs> forgot about because you know he hasn't narrated since the very beginning. Um, that says, and not Ping did die that day, but Mulan lived, and Mulan opens up her armor, realizes that the leather strap that she's used to tie down her breasts uh, stopped the shuriken, uh. and then. She then she says, "Okay, I know what I have to do," and she lets her hair fly loose, even though she probably should have cut it, and then drops down her armor, even though she should probably still keep the armor. Like that's good armor. Why are you throwing that away? And she rides off into battle as herself, which get, unlocks like her seventh level super Saiyan powers. <laughs> I don't know. And then and so, the army is pinned down by. Gong these character like bats or birds or something swarming them so they form a defensive position but then they're getting hit by a trebuchet flinging like big rocks set on fire and we actually see a small group of those soldiers get fucking vaporized by said rock it's actually kind of brutal it's a surprisingly violent for a Disney movie yeah <laughs> but I, I, you, you say that uh, Disney movies, including Set Fire to Paris, <laughs> okay, a uh, giant snake gets stabbed by a guy with a sword. Like there's, there's lots of kind of violent stuff. Let's, ha let's but, hang Brian Blessed. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck, forget, forgot about that. But <laughs> oh, he gets two mentions in this episode. What a treat for him. Uh, let's, but, let's see if we can nail it free from free land. Hmm. So, but then Mulan rides in on a horse, and steals a bunch of helmets then sort of snipes the trebuchet operators uh, with a bow and arrow but makes it look she positions the helmet to make it look like um, there's more of people there than there actually is and I have to admit that was kind of clever even if the helmets meant that the arch the imaginary archie positions were kind of going to get themselves killed if their heads were invisible yeah it's I, I don't know I, I thought it was kind of clever yeah but um and then she uses that as a distraction to get them to fire flaming uh, trebuchet rock to a mountain to cause an avalanche, much like in the original. So instead of a firework, she kind of tricks them into killing themselves. Yeah, I kind of want to skip over the fact that in the original, Mulan willingly and knowingly caused an avalanche that killed most of the Hun army. Yeah. I mean, it's war. No one, I think, really blames her for that. Yes. Although, I will admit, she's the only, like, quote-unquote, Disney princess. I know she's not an actual princess, but whatever. To have an actual, honest-to-God, multiple-figure body count. <laughs> yeah. Maximum. That's awesome. Maximum overkill. <laughs> Avalanche. <laughs> yeah. But, so then she goes back to the army just like, Hello, uh, this is me. I'm actually a lady. What, what do we that? think about that? Dishonor, disgrace. Banished. Deception, disgrace. Evil as plain as the <laughs> lack of a boob strap on a face. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, 
And in doing so, she actually rescues Chen, much like she rescued Shang in the original. But it's like, okay, you gotta, you gotta go home because you lied. Fuck. And and then on 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 the way home, when she's at her lowest mode, she's confronted again by Gong Li, who's just like, hey, I'm not here to fight. Just like you know, I was an outcast too. Now will you join me? Because you know. The Emperor, he's gonna get killed pretty soon. Now will be the time to join me. Moon's like, no, I absolutely will not. But, because here's the thing, here's the thing. It turns out the whole time this movie was going on, Bori Khan was attacking uh, garrisons along the Silk Road as a distraction to draw the army away from the Imperial City so he could sneak into the Imperial City and kill the Emperor. And I've got to ask, um, aside from actually killing one guy... What do you hope to accomplish by that? Yeah, it's, it's... like because he wants to like he wants to take back territory that the Chine Chinese people took from him and get revenge on his father. But then he's just gonna like establish his own, you know, China World Order sort of thing. But just killing the emperor is gonna do that. Like it's not like if like let's like, say for example someone came over here and killed Boris Johnson. That doesn't make them prime minister. <laughs> no, really. So resisting the temptation to say that actually wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Um, too dark, too dark. But so satisfying if I did it. Anyway, uh, so and so, Gongli reveals all this to Mulan. Mulan goes back to Donnie Yen and Chen and basically says, "Okay, I know you're going to execute me. You said you, I would be executed if I ever came back." But you know what? I don't care because I need to tell you this whole thing has been a distraction. You need to go to the Imperial Palace and protect the Emperor. And Donnie Yen was just like, why should we believe you? You lied to us. Um, maybe because she knew if she... <laughs> Like, at no point did she explain, well, the only reason I did this was because my dad is a dodgy leg and I didn't want him to die and I want to protect my family and serve China. So I pretended to be a man because I knew they would never accept me if I'm a woman, even though I can do all these awesome things which you saw. She does not say this. <laughs> and instead, she relies on... Everyone else, like all the other people, soldiers that she's interacting with over this time, having a I do believe in fairies moment oh, by them saying, I believe Mulan, I believe Mulan. And in the real world, the commander was just like, Well, I'm the commanding officer and I don't have to listen to any of you, so go fuck yourselves. But no, because it's <laughs> because this movie is contrived as all get out, Donnie Yen has just a complete 180 and just like, Okay, fine, we'll go to the Imperial City. city. And Mulan, you'll lead us there, even though it goes against everything I believe in. Here's the thing, in the original, they're already at the Imperial City when the attack happens. She warns us like, there's an attack gonna happen. We don't believe you. Oh shit, there's an attack happening. You were right, Mulan, we should have listened to you. Will you please join us? Be a man. Ah, <laughs> so they, they run to the Imperial City where the attack is in place. And Mulan gets conveniently separated from everyone else whilst they're attacking the invading Rorans and is sent to find the Emperor and make sure he's safe. But in the throne room, she finds instead Gong Li's character. She's like, ah, you're too late. The Emperor has been attacked by Bori Khan right now, just over there. Do you want me to draw you a map, maybe? <laughs> Like, it becomes pretty obvious what's going on here. But admittedly, it, it's it's obvious, but that doesn't make it bad. It's it's kind of like a cool, <laughs> sneaky thing she's doing. So Mulan rushes to save the Emperor. And, you know, Gong Li turns up just before I say, Hi, what are you doing here? Oh, just leading the protagonist over here to kick your ass. <laughs> oh, shit, you betrayed me. Yes, I did, because I believe in Mulan. For some reason, even though you've promised me everything I've ever wanted, and she hasn't, but is the whole thing where she's gonna nobly sacrifice her because Mulan at this whole time has been saying, "Why didn't you take the noble path? Take the noble path!" And so, Bori Khan is about to shoot her, but then in a hawk form, Gong Li stops the arrow with a you know, shields Mulan, and then she dies in her arms. 
and just like, well, bye, most interesting character. You died in a very interesting, self-sacrificing way. I wish this movie could have been about you. <laughs> oh, God. And, and so Mulan fights Bori Khan, but then her sword gets knocked out of her hand and gets melted by some convenient lava. Don't even ask. It's molten metal. And, and, yeah, molten metal. And then the Emperor is just like, Mulan, or whoever your name is, I don't know that yet. You need to rise up and be a warrior. Even though I'm speaking very calmly, inspirationally in my facial muscles, I'm going to be shouting at you because whoever dubbed this doesn't know what they're doing. You need to rise like a phoenix. And she's like, wow, thanks for the only specific pep talk that ties it right into my character development and, you know, the main iconography that's been present throughout this movie. Wow, that's not contrived writing at all! <laughs> Because we just had a person run by with a sign saying, Look at the message! <laughs> and and then the phoenix returns and flies up behind uh. her in a manner that is oddly reminiscent of that scene from the final season of Game of Thrones where the big dragon oh, wings God. flap behind Daenerys. Oh, that was awful. Maleficent, <gasps> Maleficent did it better. And so she continues to fight Bori Khan on like, this big wee, suspended wooden plinth thing. He gets knocked down, and he's about to fire, and she, like, tries to free the Emperor. He, like, fires an arrow up at her, but the Emperor catches it. Oh. He's like... <laughs> he, he catches you, it, purely to remind you that he's Jet Li, and he's still <laughs> awesome. Even though he's tied to a post. Even though he's tied to a post. <laughs> and then he hands it to Mulan, who, in the most unnecessarily elaborate way ever, kicks the arrow down to Bori Khan, who tries to catch it like it did at the beginning of the movie, but fails and dies. You know, I, he didn't have any of our arrows. You didn't really do anything else. He could have been captured. He yeah. could have, you know, because there's other roaring leaders out there. Just kind of ignore that. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> okay, okay. And so, much like in the original, except kind of crap now, the Emperor is just like, Mulan, you have saved us all. Will you please accept an invitation to be in my personal guard? And she's like, mm, sorry, but I gotta go home because, you know, I left under bad terms and I want to make things right. And the Emperor's just like, okay, that's fair enough. Oh, actually, before we jump on, uh, Ming-Na is in this scene, Mulan's original actor. Ming-Na Wen is in this. I didn't almost recognize her because she's chock full of makeup. And she introduces Mulan to you're, the Emperor, you're Mulan. and I can't tell if that's really respectful or kind of a shitty thing to cast her as. I don't know, because they gave her a Disney legend last year, so it's just kind of like a deep part of the deal. So here, you are Mulan, we are now making you a Disney legend, so now your duty is to cameo in this movie and introduce the new Mulan! I mean, you could argue that it's sort of like a passing the torch sort of thing. I don't know. I would go by whatever, however Ming-Na Wen feels about it. Yeah, so yeah. she's happy with it, I'd be happy with it. I don't know what her feelings are. I want to wrap this up pretty fucking quickly. So <laughs> Mulan goes home and reunites with her family, and they're just like, oh, we're so glad you're back. But then, like, the Emperor's personal guards show up. Literally five minutes went... after Mulan gets home. <laughs> yeah. And did she not notice that they were behind her? Like, they could have gone with her. Why are you following but, and... me? And... <sighs> and so Donnie Yen is there, Chen is there, and... I... Okay, here's the thing. They kind of imply that they're going to get together Mulan and Chen, but they actually don't. Hmm. Unlike in the original, they don't actually get together. There's a bit of... There's rumours of a sequel, so maybe they'll explore it there. Hmm. I don't know. The actors are fair... Well, I say the actors are fairly good chemistry. Yonsen An has great chemistry. I found him very charming throughout the whole movie. Hmm. But, uh... Y Yifu... Y Yifei Lu doesn't really have that much charisma. Like, she's okay. I wouldn't say her performance is bad, necessarily. But in terms of the interaction between him and her, she kind of acts like a dick the whole time, and he just acts sort of charming. It's it's actually sort of like a reverse of the Naomi Scott's other guy chemistry in Aladdin, where she was really charming, and he was kind of shit. <laughs> and he's getting his own spin-off. No, I, I don't know, but anyway... And so he turns up and they're presented with a big sword that has like those three virtues, bravery, loyalty, and truth. But also on the other side, it's devotion to one's family. And it's just like, hey, if you want another chance to join the Emperor's Guard. And I was just like, oh, so they're doing things a bit different from the original where she just kind of settled down and didn't want to fight anymore. 
but now because this movie is tying her into wanting to be a warrior much more, you know, they're actually exploring that aspect. Okay, that's cool, except the movie ends before she actually has a chance to accept. <laughs> and then we end not with a song from the original, but a brand new song about bravery, loyalty, devotion, whatever. Some pretty cool stylistic um, credits, and I'm just fucking glad it's over. And then, uh, including credits, this movie is two hours. Without credits, it's like an hour and forty-five minutes. It feels twice as long because yeah. there's 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 stuff that happens in the beginning of the movie, stuff that happens at the end of the movie, and the rest of it is just nothing interesting happens. Like, I'm not saying every single scene has to be bah, 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 stuff going on, but you know what? In action movies, and indeed in martial arts movies, there is a lot of stuff going on. Mm. And they have the quiet character moments, cool, but they don't have enough of the actions. Uh, it's just, ah, oh, God. You, hey, you know, but that's the, not the problem this movie has. There's a lot of problems with this movie. But, but the biggest problem is this. The original film had personality. This movie has action scenes. Good action scenes, but that's it. It has no personality. And if I if I had never seen the original Mulan, the original Disney Mulan, and I'd just seen this movie, I would watch it, think, eh, that was all right, and just move on through it. Because it's just so empty. It leaves no lasting impression I'm not saying it's impossible to like I know some people really really hate it and I completely understand that too but there are some things that I think are okay but this is not an original movie this is a live action remake and this is the this is the real problem I have when you compare it to the original it's crap but <laughs> when you don't compare it to the original it, it, it's just kind of nothing. It's kind of nothing. So there's no real way you could look at it where it's it's good. There, there you, I could say, technically speaking, on a technical level, it's decent. The cinematography, except for those cut, one or two bits, is pretty good. The acting is good. The martial arts are passable. Mm. You know, they're decent enough. And the music... I mean, they basically just take a bunch of the chords from you know, the, the, the melodies from the original songs and just use those. But even that's fine. Kind of makes me want to watch the original. But, you know, on a technical level, it's fine. But it's just... it. I... God, I, it just feels so... The word that I've seen used has been husk. Mm. It's kind of a husk. And at least... With the other live action remakes, they are identifiably. It's clear that Disney were trying to do something different with this compared to all the other live action remakes. Because all those other live action remakes closely followed the originals and yet even still failed to do that. This doesn't follow it as closely, which you think would make it better. I will say it doesn't make it worse, but it's just a different kind of bad. Well, the way I see it is that they've removed all the stuff that people like about the original, and when people ask, so what are you going to put in its place, they don't really put anything in to replace it to make it give it its own originality. There's no identity to it. God. Yeah, that's, that's the best way of putting it. This movie doesn't have a real identity. It tries new things. I'll give it some credit. I... So, is this the best live-action remake so far? Bearing in mind, I haven't seen Pete's Dragon yet. I promise I will at some point. You better. Um, honestly, compared to Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast, yes, because it does enough things different, which is something that I have been asking for. So we'll credit that. Hmm. Does that make it good, though? No. No, no. It's more respectful. I respect this movie way more than I do the others. I think it's better on a technical level, but in terms of pure artistry, pure creativity, pure soul, something that makes you have this real emotional connection, I didn't experience that. And that would be bad in of itself. Then there's all the stuff that's gone on behind the scenes. Because here's the thing. <sighs> Much like a dog is desperate for its foul-smelling dinner, 
Disney is desperate for Chinese money. Yep. They have been trying like mad, pathetically so, to break into the Asia market because they are greedy bastards who aren't satisfied with a large box office return, uh, you know, in America or even internationally in general. No, no, no. They want access to the lucrative Chinese market. And so they are willing to slobber over as much Chinese government cock as they can <laughs> in order to... If that sounds disgusting, that's because it is. I mean, I mean seriously, if Walt, I'm sure Walt Disney would be very happy to know that his his company is, is in bed with a communist dictatorship that has concentration camps. I'm sure he'd be very proud of that. It'll dial over again. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so, so that's the big thing. And I was unaware of this until like the last few days when I was doing research for this. Yeah. So a lot of the filming for this movie took place in the province of Xinjiang, where apparently there are internment camps, aka re education centers, aka as the Chinese government would put it, vocational education and training centers, where up to a million people are imprisoned. Now, I, I don't know exactly what goes on in these camps, but I'm willing to bet that <laughs> human rights watchdogs groups are, are not happy about it. That probably means bad shit is going on. Holy shit. If I saw something on the internet the other day, I saw a picture from that camp compared to a picture of one of the camps in Germany during the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware that it was one of these camps, but I, I just saw it. And the um, the comparisons are frighteningly similar because it, it's basically just there to brainwash people into accepting the Chinese Communist Party line. And it's that's, that's scary. And the film, at the end of the credits, gives special thanks to several government bodies in that region, including the people who operate the camps. So Disney thanked people who run re-education camps. Should I bang my head on the desk or should you? You don't have to bang your head in the desk because Disney's shame lies over the head. And they were punished for that shame. <laughs> not by the US government, not even by uh, general audiences. Although people have, quite rightly, expressed their displeasure online about this. But no, because of the controversy, the Chinese government has now ordered all their media outlets, because let's be honest, they're a dictatorship and they can and indeed often do do that not to cover the release of Mulan. <laughs> so they're losing money from the very people they were desperate to get money from because they cooperated with the people they were trying to get money from. Avalanche. Yeah, but it's an avalanche of their own making. I couldn't think of a more ironic punishment other than all the Disney executives getting their testicles dumped in acid. <laughs> oh, good grief. It's, it's, oh, God, it's, it, it's, and it's, I, I don't know how else to put it, Disney. You uh, are, lo heads. are losing money out of it. It's become, a, apparently, a big problem for them. And apparently, Disney CFO Christy McCarthy said that filming in Jinyang, Jinyang, uh, generated a lot of ish new oh, issues for them. No kidding. No kidding. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 uh, Christine McCarthy, that you had issues in that region. I think there might be some other people in that region that have much bigger <laughs> issues. But then, no, no, no. You stood to lose a lot of money. So, you know, that's the real takeaway here. And uh, and it, 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 get, it gets better from there. Um, the fact that uh, the director for this movie is not Asian, is the fact is uh, New Zealand uh, director slash screenwriter Nikki Caro, who. Um, has made some good movies, in fairness, and including an episode of Anne with an E. Ooh. But 
Uh, I, I, the, she has said that whilst we definitely need diversity in movies, at the end of the day, it's a story, I'm a storyteller, I'm good at it, and you should just judge it on its own merits, not me. And I kind of agree with that, and I definitely don't want to pigeonhole Asian directors as only being able to direct martial arts movies or oh. our movies that feature primarily well. Asian characters. Because this is something, actually, they originally approached or originally considered uh, hiring Ang Lee Ooh. because, oh, he did that movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Here's the thing, though. Ang Lee only wanted to do one martial arts movie because he liked martial arts but he only wanted to do one movie and he's done lots of different movies since then and it's that kind of typecasting that we want to avoid having said that I do think there might be some considering the fact that it is a very Asian story featuring Asian history and Asian culture and Asian legendary figures and Asian mythology perhaps an Asian director might have been more appropriate so I, I I think that no one comes out of this looking particularly good, especially the main actress uh, Li Fei Lu. Oh, so Yi Fei Lu, I can't count the amount of times I mispronounced her name. Who apparently, uh, on the internet, shared an image of, of something relating to the Hong Kong protests and said, "I support the Hong Kong police." and essentially supported the police brutality in Hong Kong who are attacking civilians who are protesting a tyrannical government and when they are being arrested for protesting a tyrannical government have to shout, my name is, insert name here, I will not commit suicide. They had to say that because a lot of people have been mysteriously committing suicide in prison. And when I say that, I mean they're being fucking murdered. And... This main actor, I don't know anything about her other than the fact that she was in this movie and the fact that she tweeted in or did something in support for the people who were horribly abusing people who were protesting the main Chinese government. And, ah, God. And because of this, she wasn't present at the 2019 Disney Expo, whatever they call it, uh... Was it D23? Yeah, the, yeah, D23. Yeah, she wasn't there. They yeah. didn't involve her in that. <laughs> like, no, go away, go away. And, and it's, it's, oh my, it's, it's almost like any time you make a movie that heavily involves the Chinese government, bad things are going to happen. And here's the thing. This is not on uh, the Chinese people. It's not even no. on Chinese culture. It's purely, I, I, it's purely on the Chinese government which is a tyrannical government that is a horrible and horrendous human rights abuser and Disney are desperate for their money and yes granted that money comes from the Chinese people just going to the cinema but considering the state of the media in that country and how heavily monitored and censored uh, that it, it, it is why would you want to? Oh, because you make money. It's okay that we're supporting such a horrific government if we make money out of it. God, and it doesn't help the fact that uh, tensions between the US government and the Chinese government are at an all-time low. Wonder who we could possibly blame for that. Hmm. And, and, oh, oh, God, this, 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 this is just supposed to be a cool movie about a cool character that defends her home. And it's turned to this ugly thing purely because Disney are greedy. That, that, that's why. They're greedy because they charge a premium fee for this movie on their own streaming service that people already pay for. They're greedy because they cozy up to a bastard government. The and they just make all these horrible, horrendous decisions. And they're not doing it for you. They're not doing it for me. They're doing it purely for their wallets. If at least if they were doing it because they if they turn turn out that Disney was actually I aligned politically, ideologically with the Chinese government, I think that would be awful. But at least I could not not respect it. But understand it because that's what they believe they don't believe in it but they're willing to put that aside in order to get that sweet sweet moolah 
And oh, 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 apparently, apparently. Oh, now what? Those, those people that they wanted to get all that money from, the Chinese people, don't even like the yeah, movie. Exactly. They don't like the fact that the characters are crap. They don't like <laughs> the story is is bland. And they don't like the fact that she is represented so poorly. They don't actually like it. They made it for them. They make it for us. They made it for them. And they don't even <laughs> like it. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. oh, I love it. And, it, and here's the thing. It's, it's the hypocrisy is so weird because they didn't make Aladdin for Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I know they would have hated that, but they did. They didn't do it. Uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't make Beauty and the Beast for French people. <laughs> Why? Because they don't care about that kind of money. They don't care about, you know, making bank there. They just want a good Chinese story. Money. And. I will say this, apparently, with a budget of $200 million, it's the most expensive film ever made by a female director, which means it'll probably be the most expensive bomb. It's 7.5 million box office at the moment. I mean, I... And here's the thing, that's not all on Disney in China, that's also on COVID-19. No one's making money for films right now, except possibly Christopher Nolan. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't checked. But... It's... <laughs> oh god it's they could have just sat on it but even then all those problems would still be there there's there's no way around it and I don't think everything about this movie is shit but I think enough of it is shit it doesn't help the fact that there are four writers of this movie Ooh. Elizabeth Martin Lauren Hynek and Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver who are a screenwriting duo who have written some pretty good films. They did Rise of the Planet of the Apes, good. Uh -huh. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, good. In the Heart of the Sea, I haven't heard, seen, but heard good things. Uh, oh, oh, and Jurassic World. Never mind, they're shit. <laughs> oh, oh, this is great. 20, 2024, they're doing Avatar 3. That's brilliant. Oh, oh good. God. When's Avatar 2 coming out? Not that I care. God. <laughs> and so, um... You know what? Is the the I'm guessing that the original Mulan is on Disney Plus? Yes. Capers, go watch that movie. Yeah. I'm sure you've already seen it, but if you haven't, go see it. If you have seen it, go see it because that movie, I think it has a few problems here and there that I do take issue with, but on the whole, I think it's a very good movie. That honestly, out of all those Disney movies from that time, has is the one that is appreciated the most in value in terms of audience reaction more and more people are discovering that movie and figuring out that it's actually really good. And I'm one of those people. I thought it was pretty good when I first saw it and I've defended it since, you know, when I criticized all the other Disney movies. But my estimation of it has only grown. And considering what it could have ended up as, that's just going to continue to grow. And <laughs> so that's really all we can say about it. If you compare this movie to the original, it's shit. And when you don't compare it to the original movie, it's just a hollow shell of what it could have been. And in the end, no one benefited from it. We didn't, the audience. Chinese audiences didn't. Um, the Chinese government didn't. Disney didn't. Everyone lost. And on that note... I think we're going to end the show. Oh. Thank you very much, Mark, for joining me today. Oh, dear, what a palaver. <laughs> and if you enjoy the show, Capers, please tell your friends, shout from the rooftops. If you haven't already, go back and listen to some of our super episodes, like our previous live-action Disney movies. We tear them all apart. <laughs> and you can listen to the show on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, Spotify, or podcapers.com. If you want to get in touch with us, suggest show topics, or maybe come on the show yourself, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at AP2HYC. Thank you very much to Dan Harris for our logo, the lovely microphone, the red and blue 3D glasses. Those are mine. And thank you for listening. This has been Podcapers, the official podcast from a place to hang your cape. Cue the music!